coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. We're headed to the place of my people, I mean literally, and we'll get to that for another Oklahoma history lesson with two all-beef patties and cheese. Of course, we're talking about Hamburger King in Shawnee, Oklahoma. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. We have spent some time in Shawnee collectively. You lived not far from there, right? I lived in Shawnee. I went to school in Shawnee, Oklahoma in the eighth grade. You've lived everywhere. You're kind of the only in Oklahoma. You, if only in OK was a was a person, it would be you. You've been everywhere. You've eaten everywhere. So, interesting fact. Gimme. OBU, Oklahoma Baptist University, opened up in 1910. That is correct. In 1987, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, Harley took his first Taekwondo class at OBU. Did you really? Yes, I did. Were you a Were you a Baptist black belt? <laughs> uh, it was It was not affiliated. Well, for starters, it's a university. Okay. But secondly, you went to university to take Taekwondo, right? <laughs> You studied abroad. Douche. Well, I'm not really. No. I just don't think of that. I don't think of that as a place of Zen and, uh, I don't know, karate. <laughs> well, it's not karate. It's, <laughs> it's taekwondo. <laughs> There's another university there, St. Gregory's University. Yeah. Which relocated to Shawnee from Sacred Heart in 1915. But they've been bought. But. Yeah. Another interesting Harley fact. Harley did detention. At St. Gregory's University one time. I don't remember the circumstances. I remember I got in trouble at school and I had to do something at St. Gregory's University on a Saturday. Is there not enough to do at at Shawnee Elementary or Junior High that you went to? Middle school. Middle school. They shipped you off to St. Greg's? Yeah. Well, guess who bought St. Greg's? Hobby Lobby. Really? Yeah. They're going to turn it into, I believe they're turning it into, I'm not, don't quote me, but a Bible college. Really? I was shocked. I'm, ca- I'm, I'm Catholic. You're a recovering Catholic. I'm a recovering Catholic. I'm what they call a, uh, I was a cradle Catholic and then I became what they refer to as a pagan Catholic. But yes, Hobby Lobby Bottom. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I did a little kicking around in Shawnee when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of fond memories of Shawnee. Now, when I, I first played okay. Nintendo, yeah, Mario Brothers was in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Really? Yes. Man, you're not really. You're not that old. You're really not that old. When I when I put it on paper, we're not that far apart. <laughs> you are three years younger than me. But it took me ten years to get Mario because I <laughs> couldn't afford a Nintendo. So we've got some more Shawnee facts, but we'll get to those right after this. Well, it's that time of year. It's the holiday season. And by holiday season, I mean it's holiday tax group season. If you're getting your taxes done, <laughs> now is the time after you've counted all the receipts and wrote off all your kids' presents as, as charitable expenses. I don't think that is why it's called holiday tax group. But it feels like it. But it is coming up to the end of the year. A lot of people do have to be considering deductions and that sort of thing. And if you're in the market for somebody to help you to hold your hand... Yes. Uh, Justin Holiday over at the Holiday Tax Group is the man for the job. And I am going to say, if you got a present from the federal government in the form of a notification that you're going to be audited, mm-hmm. Holiday Tax Group specializes in that kind of thing. Yeah, I got a, a Jelly of the Month letter from Uncle Sam a few <laughs> years ago, and uh, I didn't know about Holiday Tax Group, but now I do. So, again... Holiday Tax Group. It's HolidayTaxGroup.com. Holiday is with two L's. Two L's. Check them out. So, Brett. Yeah. Did you know that Shawnee was in contention to be the capital of the state of Oklahoma? No. They came in third. Did you know that I've also spent a lot of... I've spent some time kicking around in Shawnee, too. But I didn't know that. I did not know that. What? I don't know. Well, I go to the doctor there. I thought you were going to say the casino. No, no, no. I don't go to the casino. Although there's a joke in my family that that's where we go to make our cup. <laughs> but then, no, that's not. That's horrible. That's not me. So 
Shawnee was a crossroads for train travel early on. They had multiple depots in town. I had no idea. And they have, I think it's the Santa Fe Depot Mm -hmm. Museum Mm -hmm. there in town. Yeah, they do. That building is super cool. It is really cool. I mean, downtown Shawnee, a lot of history down there. You know, it served as an agricultural hub back in the early 20th century. And it's also a home for burgers. It is a home for burgers. (laughs) And we're going to be talking about Hamburger King. But did you know, Mm -hmm. apparently they did a lot of cotton business early on. Yeah. But today we are going to be talking about Hamburger King, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Yeah. But did you know there is another well-known burger joint that started in Shawnee? I wouldn't even know where to start. Sonic. Sonic started in Shawnee? Yes. I knew it was an Oklahoma business, but I had no idea that it started in in Shawnee, and now it's owned by Arby. It got its start in Shawnee, and I think that's probably, we'll probably save that for another show. How old were you when you found out that Sonic was from Shawnee? I was 42 years old. It took all these years, it took Arby's buying them out for me to find out where it all started. But here's something about me. All right. I am a member of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation. Okay. Yes, you are. Did you know? It's the ninth largest tribe in the country. 26,000 members. I did not know that. Well, it'll be 26,001 in April. But I did know (laughs) that Citizen Potawatomi Nation is headquartered in Shawnee and Tecumseh, which I don't understand how you can be headquartered in two places. I don't either. But here's an interesting fact, too. What? Potawatomi County is where the CPN tribe resides. But Potawatomi in the Potawatomi County is spelled differently. And I have absolutely no reason to know why it's that way. It's it's two different spellings. Does it is it meant to be the same thing? No. Okay. <laughs> Potawatomi County was founded by other tribes like the Creek and the Cherokee. Interesting. They, that was the, originally where that came from. And then here comes the pots with one T <laughs> to show up. That is so weird. That's weird. It's been a question. Is it's it's a it's a tale as old as time. But here's another interesting fact about the Citizen Potawatomis. Okay. We took part in something similar to the Trail of Tears, but ours was called the Trail of Death. Part of the Indian Removal Act in the Trail of Tears, they relocated 60,000 tribe members, various tribes across the country. A few few years later, something similar happened to my tribe. We were removed from Indiana to Kansas. Kansas. Now, there are two different bands of the Citizen Potawatomi. Well, the Potawatomi. There's the Prairie Band and the Citizen Band. Prairie Band stayed in Kansas. Okay. Citizen Band were the one of the first tribes to sign up for U.S. citizenship. Okay. Hence where we became Citizen Potawatomi. Uh, a lot of people call us the sellouts. It, the, the, the Prairie Prairie Band say we, kind, we sold out to the white folks. Okay, I'm never going to say that. Here's why. Right. Because the word Potawatomi mm-hmm. actually means people from the place of the fire. I'm not messing with the fire people or the fire nation. Or keepers of the fire. I'm I'm out. Like, you guys are cool. I like you. I'm not going to say anything bad about you. I like not being but I on will, fire. But I will say we were probably nothing against any other tribes. We were one, probably one of the nicer. We were considered more of the of a hunter-gatherer. Like, northern Indians were more hunter-gatherer tribes. Okay. As opposed to some of the southern tribes that were probably a little bit more, I don't want to say savage. Let's just say more aggressive. More aggressive. We were more (laughs) (laughs) passive-aggressive. Which probably fits well with your Catholic upbringing. Right. (laughs) Right. Which, they, we were, the, the Kansas part of our tribe were considered, they called them the mission band because we were... We were approached by missions, Catholic missions, along that trail of death, and we a lot of them were converted to Catholicism. Father Murphy was a big historian in the Citizen Potawatomi, Potawatomi tribes. He's considered to be, they even made him a an honorary member of the tribe. Catholicism is a big theme in the Potawatomi nation. Well, I will say that Father Murphy probably really likes hamburgers he probably does <laughs> if he was alive he'd love a hamburger oh my from hamburger God. king worst segue ever so let's talk about hamburger king yeah this is a throwback to the 50s 60s diner oh man yeah. got the phones at the table yeah 
they first opened their doors in 1927, mm-hmm. and it was originally located in... Drum roll, please. I can't do the drum roll. <laughs> originally located in Bristow, Oklahoma. Bristow, hi, how are you? We're back. Kind of, not really. <laughs> Hamburger King was originally where Russ's Ribs is located now in Bristow. Uh Uh-huh. We talked on the last episode. We did a Bristow show, the Beach House. Shout out to the Beach House. You guys have become quite... You guys are our... Our number one fans right now. I was going to say you guys are our beaches, but... Yeah, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) don't... Yeah, you don't want to do that. What up, beaches? You know, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys we've mentioned before. Yes. They were regulars at the original Hamburger King in Bristow. In the 40s and 50s. That's right. Okay, Hamburger King. I'm sorry, it's the king of hamburgers in Shawnee. 50s, 60s diner. It actually originated in Bristow, Oklahoma in 1927. George Maxis located it there in what is now Russ's Ribs. We didn't see it when we were there. We went to the beach house. But a a call back to the beach house, another regular of the original Hamburger King, was Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. They flew through there quite frequently. Now, his brother Joseph, George's brother Joseph, decided, hey, let's let's spread the let's spread the hamburger love. So he brought Hamburger King to Shawnee. Opened up a franchise. Opened up a franchise, if you will. Dare dare I say franchise, because that makes it sound like they sold out. I think they were doing the God. They were doing the Lord's work. Okay. Okay. So the ham the Hamburger King's been passed down generation to generation to generation. Currently, right now, I believe it's Cindy Maxis that's running it because her husband, Mike, passed away. So, But apparently now you can currently see the fourth generation uh-huh. of the Maxis family running the working, working there at Hamburger King in Shawnee. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. Every chance I get when I'm down there, I stop in. Now, I did make a mistake the first time I ever went there. I'll tell you I took my son, and we went in and didn't realize that there were phones that you called in your order. I like that idea, by the way. But we couldn't figure out why nobody was nobody was bringing us drinks. Nobody was. I was like, this is the worst service ever. <laughs> so we left. Oh, really? And I was like, the next time, we need to, I need to try to, I'm gonna get. I'm going to give them another shot. Right. Like, like, like it's like their fault. Like it's their fault. So we go in, and I see somebody pick up a phone. I'm like, son of a gun. It's just like Chuck House. The thing about Hamburger King. Yeah. It is very simple menu. There's no no frills, bougie aiolis or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You're talking flat top burgers. Oh my god, they're so good with the edges just ever so crispy, ever so crispy. But you're not you're not going to find a lot of weird stuff on this menu. It's real cut and dry. It's burgers and fries and chili. The thing that's a glaring that's glaringly different. Is one of the condiments that you can ask for. It's interesting. Miracle Whip. Yeah. Is that ever an option for you? I hate Miracle Whip. Hmm. It doesn't look like the right color to me. I'm colorblind and I get that. But I look at Miracle Whip and, and it looks white. like it's bad mayonnaise. Right. But I do like that you can... I do get Miracle Whip. It's gross. I like that you have that option. My personal favorite is the triple kicker. But the jalapenos will kick your ass. I'm telling you. Um, I don't have a problem with hot food. I do have a problem. What? With Hamburger King. What? I'm just going to say it. Their coffee game sucks. You don't like their coffee? No. Why, why are you going to a burger, Hamburger King? Dude, not, I like coffee. Not coffee. Golly. You know, you, you you bitched about the coffee at the beach house, and they, they fell in love with it. So, <laughs> uh, so may, maybe that's the secret recipe. I'm just going to say... There is not enough good coffee in the state of Oklahoma. I'm ready for some Oklahoma entrepreneurs to start kicking out some rock solid coffee and run these Starbucks people out of the state. What is your? I mean, let's let's talk for a second. What's your cup of coffee? What's your perfect? I mean, if you're going to make a pot of coffee at a diner, I don't want a pot of coffee. I want somebody running a damn espresso machine back there. Are Come you on, serious? Yes. Stop with that. No, give me some coffee. There's nothing 50s or 60s about that, that model or mindset. I get it, but there's too many soft drinks and not enough. Just give me caffeinated hot water. Are you serious? Yes. You don't break down in a place like that and have like an old-fashioned cherry Coke. Dude, I'm cherry telling you, the, Man. that stuff will kill you. I really think that's like 90% of the health problems on the planet is crap like that. 
I like a nice, sweet, and savory. I love their food. I'm their not, food is good. It's fantastic. Or their food is great. I'll I'll go that far. They're passionate in Shawnee. They're passionate about some hamburger king. We know that firsthand. <laughs> yeah, I will say that the opinions of the populace mm-hmm. are it's either the best place ever. Yeah. Or, or, the, or the worst place Or the ever. worst place ever. I don't get it. I really think it boils down to people are so used to the, the not cleanliness, the, I don't know the word that I'm trying to, the modern. Yeah. People are so used to the modernized building where they walk into an Arby's in Wisconsin and mm-hmm. it looks exactly, exactly the same as the Arby's in Alabama. Mm-hmm. And people are used to that. Whereas you walk into a building like this, and it doesn't look like anything you've seen before. It doesn't look like that in the smells and the sounds. And it's definitely a place. What I like about Hamburger King is it's one of those places that we grew up with where that's where I want to eat where the people are, where the where the, the locals are. You know what I mean? Right. They're not going. They're not. They might go for a steak out by the highway. But everybody kind of comes together in the community. You'll go into Hamburger King, and it, it, at its busiest, it's always that same amount of people. It's never super, super packed, but it's always, they've never failed me. Okay, well, I will say there's one thing that I can legitimately pick on Hamburger King about. What gravy? What now? I'll, I'm Is it give, the gravy? I'm, I'm, no. I'm going to give them a pass on the coffee. Okay. I mean, not really a pass, but nobody else does it. So, you know, why the hell should we kind of thing? Their sign needs some help. Oh, it's got that. It's got a nice patina to it. I don't. You don't like that? I, dude, I, it, I don't think it draws people in. And I think that's a mistake. I don't, but I don't think they need to put some cheesy. I think what you said, said matters. They're always busy, but they're never super busy. They need to be drawing people in far and wide, and I don't think you do that with that sign. I know, but uh, that that picture of that sign, I mean, I thank our lucky stars for taking that sucker. People love it. I know, I, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. And that's the thing. In, in that downtown situation, it fits right in. It, I mean, it's it's been there. It's a storefront that hasn't changed itself much. Has They haven't put an extra coat of paint. On there, the Famica is still the same. If you go in there and look at the details, it's there are things there that have been there for decades. And some might say that's a bad thing, but I think it adds the character. You know what I mean? It's 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 aged like the like the cooktop. You know it. <laughs> okay, so I get having. I'm I'm a I'm just that guy. I'm a, I'm give me uh, aesthetically. I understand having a seasoned cooktop. Right. I don't understand having a seasoned countertop. I don't have a problem with refreshing things, but I think more importantly, the sign. Yes, I think there's some iconic aspects to it, but I I feel like they I feel like they're not doing themselves justice. You look at it from the outside, and it doesn't draw you in. It draws <laughs> it draws me in, but again, I think that's I like the that. smell. No, I like the look of it though. It's right, right next to the. It's right next to Richard's Drugstore, and Richard's Drugstore has this nice patina to it, and the old school signs in the window. I mean, it just it fits that corner okay. to me. Well, I'm but here on the flip, if it wasn't open and it was just an empty storefront, that's even worse. So let's talk about hours of operation. Sure. When are they open? When are they open? I don't. They're always open when I go. I mean, I'm looking at their schedule. Yeah, but this is an audio podcast. Okay, tell them. They're not open on Mondays. What's wrong with that? They're not open on Sundays. Do they not get a day off? Well, apparently they get two days off. Well, yeah. But I think more importantly, they don't open until lunch. Mm -hmm. They close at 8. Man, Um, have you ever been to Shawnee After Dark? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I have. (laughs) But I don't know. I feel like they're open when I get there. That's all I care about. I eat dinner late. But are you going to be in Shawnee at 8 o'clock? I could be. And if I was, I'd probably want to eat Hamburger King. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can see that. I I just feel like hire some teenagers, get them trained up, Mm -hmm. push that out to 1030. Then I can have a burger when I feel comfortable. And hell, that seasoned grill could Mm -hmm. probably kick out some 
pretty badass sausage and eggs. Yeah, if you opened up early. and some hash browns. I think but the it, business it, is there, but I don't think you call it Hamburger King. I think you'd have to change it to like Grill King or something. Are you like kidding that. me, dude? Hamburger? You can't tell me that you wouldn't have a breakfast burger from Hamburger King. That oh yes, yeah. hamburger with an egg. Yeah, some cheddar cheese on top, and that's the only breakfast that you serve. I mean, I'd I could eat it. Dig, I could dig on some breakfast burgers. So I say, let's work on the hours. There's got to be a reason. I mean, it's probably one of those tried and true things. I think it's, I think it's a throwback, and it probably needs to go away. There are way too many restaurants in the state of Oklahoma that are, that are keeping. You know, we visited a small town earlier this week, right? And there was literally nothing open at all. We could have, if we would have set a fire in this town. Nobody would have known. <laughs> the fire department would have had to have been opened up to respond. Yeah, they would be driving to the fire station. No, I get it. I mean, you know, if you're going to have 1980s not, or what, you know, old school hours, give me old school prices. Hey, yeah, I'm fine with you not being open on Monday if I can buy a burger for 25 cents. No joke. I mean, McDonald's made a name for itself on 25 cent hamburgers. So, you know, but. The food speaks for itself. The only thing, I think one thing, I'll give you my, I love them. I do. They're my favorite restaurant in Shawnee. I wish that the potato wedges were fresh. I wish that the tater tots were fresh. They're not. Um, the nearest I can tell, the wedges are frozen. But all the other ingredients are fresh. Fresh vegetables on the hamburger. They make, they have homemade pies and desserts. Really good. You can make it, you can get a cherry Coke with cherry syrup. So there are a lot of things that I go, uh, you know, I'm not there for the, uh, but the, again, you're not the, there for the fries. You're there for the burgers. Right. The king of the, the dish is the burger or there. So d- here's a solution to your problem. To my problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't like their fries. Don't, don't order them. fries. Get two burgers instead of a burger and fries. It's probably better for you. It probably, yeah, in actuality, it probably is. I, I can, you know, when you think about it, a Hamburger King hamburger may be healthier for you than a McDonald's hamburger. Um, I'm going to say without a doubt, <laughs> a Hamburger King hamburger is way better for you than anything that you're going to get at McDonald's. Yeah, you can't get a triple kicker at McDonald's. And looking at the menu, I I feel like you're probably getting better prices. Yeah, you, I mean, you, I'm going to pay more. I'll pay the price of admission for a, a burger that I'm watching them l- peel the, the paper off of and slap fresh onto the grill and they're not pulling it. You know, I've been, okay, I'll dry, I'll buy a frozen patty, but I don't want to, I'm not going to buy a frozen patty at a restaurant. Right. Not a chance. So, yeah. But if you think we're completely full of shit and want to tell us how bad we are at uh, filling you in on the hamburger scene. And, and, well, or if you think that you've got a better, you know, where you hardly can get a decent cheeseburger with a nice cup of coffee. What an old fart, man. That's like, that's an old man thing. Whatever. Hit us up on Facebook, Only an OK Show. Okay. Let us know what you think. Let us know where we need to head next. But this has been the Only an OK Show. I am Harley. And I'm Brett. And we're out of here. I don't like the way I said that. In the birth of, around the birth of, no, I don't like that. So you said as an agro, served as an agro, you said that, and I'm going to say, during the, I hate you, three, two, one.